Hello everyone, I welcome you all in my Science Academy YouTube channel and in today's session we are going to discuss GATE 2016 Biochemistry paper. Let us start with the first question. First question is telling that heterologous expression of chain fluorescence protein is possible because of genetic code is. Okay, so here the answer will be universal. Why? Because heterologous gene expression is protein of one organism is getting expressed in the different kind of system like prokaryotic gene expressing in the pro eukaryotic system or eukaryotic gene expression is getting done in the bacterial system or prokaryotic that's called heterologous it is only possible if the back that genetic codon is universal so here in this case green fluorescence protein is isolated from jellyfish and this is a codata and this gene is expressed in the bacteria so this is a heterologous system eukaryotic gene getting expressed in the bacteria and the gene sequence is here is different but bacteria is different but even then this gene is getting expressed in the bacteria it is because of that genetic codon is universal in nature for example AUG is going to code methionine in bacteria also and eukaryotic or human also it means this is universal code so answer will be first one moving to next question phosphoglucose isomerase was incubated at point 2 mole of glucose 6 phosphate on reaching equilibrium 55 percent of glucose is converted into fructose what is the equilibrium constant okay so here they are telling that glucose 6 phosphate is converting into fructose 6 phosphate by enzyme isomerase and at equilibrium 55% of glucose 6-phosphate is converted into fructose 6-phosphate, 55%. The remaining will be 45% because if suppose 100% is there of glucose 6-phosphate and 55% is getting converted into fructose 6-phosphate, so remaining 100 minus 55, 45 remain as a substrate which is glucose 6-phosphate and we know that there is a formula of, of equilibrium constant k equilibrium is product by substrate concentration so product concentration here is 55 percent divided by 45 percent so answer will be 11 5 ja 55 and 9 5 ja so it is 1.2 so answer will be 1.2 for second question it is answer will be 1.2 moving to next question hydrolysis of peptide involves cleavage of bond between the atom okay so it involves bond c alpha c double bond n n h and c alpha 1 and c alpha 2 so this is the first amino acid amino acid number 1 and this is the amino acid 2 C alpha carbon, center carbon of amino acid 2 and amino acid 1. In between this, there is a peptide bond. So, this is a peptide bond, and peptide bond is taking place between CO and NH. So, peptide bond usually cleave here. So, the bond between C and N is going to break. So, answer will be fourth option bond between N and C is going to break. So, next question, question number fourth. The interconversion UDP glucose to UDP galactose is catalyzed by so glucose and galactose are basically the epimer and epimer are those carbon where the hydroxyl group in this carbon position is changed in glucose and galactose like in glucose C4 hydroxyl group at C4 is toward the right side and in galactose it is at left side so that is called epimer so this is convertible interconvertible between glucose and galactose since these are epimer enzyme requires epimerase so moving to next question gel filtration profile of corresponding activity data of pure enzyme shows that sample enzyme is running on the sgs page okay so here you can see this is the profile elution profile this side y axis is a absorbance at 280 nanometer means it is showing the peak of protein because uh, protein this aromatic amino so tryptophan tyrosine and the phenylalanine get absorbed at 280 nanometer so that's why it is showing the peak of protein and dotted line is showing the enzyme activity so you can see that the enzyme activity is zero over here although protein concentration is maximum but here protein concentration elution is less 
but activity is more so you can say that at 30 kilo Dalton all the protein concentration is less but the activity is maximum at 60 kilo Dalton protein elution is maximum but activity is zero so let us see the option which one of the following is correct interpretation both monomer and dimer are active no this is a basically dimer why because 30 into 2 that is form 60 and this is the monomer and monomer unit is 30 kilo Dalton so both are not active because if both were active then the activity peak should be here also it is not there so this option is wrong enzyme is active only as a monomer yeah this is option is correct because in monomer it is active because enzyme activity is maximum protein do not form dimer yeah, it is forming dimer uh, enzyme is active only as a time no this is the answer will be will be correct option moving to next question amino acid residue predominantly involved in protein dna interaction okay so pro protein is interacting with the dna and dna we know that it is mainly made up of negative it is negative charge why because of presence of phosphate so phosphate is having minus two charge because of, uh, there is a phosphate present in the phosphodiester bond because of this DNA and RNA are negatively charged so protein which are interacting with this negatively charged should be positive charge so that positive and negative interaction could, should be there so mainly the protein having lysine or arginine which are having side chain amine group which are positively charged which is called basic amino acid are present in the protein which interact with the DNA and RNA so answer will be which should be positively charged moving to next question cellulose serve as a structural polymer where a starch does not this is because okay so the starch is basically act as a uh, fuel or a storage material a storage of energy cellulose always act as a structural role because it is beta conformation and because of this it is extended form so can act as a structural role, a structural role. And they have the interchain hydrogen bond because these are the beta structure, beta sheet structure, and it been in between these there is a hydrogen bond. And also cellulose has beta 1,4 glycosidic link. It is not al and in a starch, it is alpha 1,4. So an answer will be beta 1,4 linked glucose monomer and interchain hydrogen one so answer will be first option moving to next question question number eight molar absorption spectra so it is showing the absorption peak at 280 nanometer of different amino acid and it is showing the peak so i have already discussed in the previous question also that because protein having the three aromatic amino acid tryptophan tyrosine and phenylalanine because of that it will show the peak at 280 nanometer so maximum peak will be of tryptophan followed by tyrosine and list will be of phenylalanine it is because of their structure tryptophan are having indolring indolring so they have more free electron and because of this free electron they can get easily excited at high energy so you have to remember tryptophan is getting more easily excited than tyrosine and then phenylalanine so answer will be first is showing the maximum peak it is of tryptophan second is of tyrosine and third one is phenylalanine so answer will be first option moving to next question question number nine fluidity of phospholipid membrane increases when fatty acid okay long chain fatty acid is more stable so a uh, one thing you have to remember long chain long chain means more carbon fatty acid is more stable and unsaturated fatty acid is least stable because they are very much they are liquid in the room temperature just like oil because of they have the multi double bond or unsaturated fatty acid so fluidity is maintained by use short chain fatty acid because it will not provide the stability and that fatty acid should be reaching unsaturated fatty acid or more double bond so answer will be chain increase chain length decreases and degree of unsaturation increases answer will be b moving to next question polypeptide is biosynthesized on the ribosome inside the cell 
okay chemical synthesis of the polypeptide is also possible by mary field of salt phase synthesis in both the cases the polypeptide chain is extended in one or minus at the time the direction of polypeptide synthesis okay so they are comparing two process of protein synthesis one at in vivo condition which is inside the cell on ribosome so movement of n to c protein synthesis always take place from n terminus to c terminus while in case of in vitro which is tested which is suggested by merrifield chemical method of protein synthesis artificial protein. here it is opposite to this natural form means peptide bond formation always take place from c terminus to n terminus so let us see option and c terminus to n terminus in the ribosome no wrong this is wrong n terminus to c terminus on the ribosome and c terminus to n terminus in the solid this is the right answer moving to next question four group of metabolite are given below choose the group in which the compound contains at least one bond whose delta g of hydrolysis is below than 7 kilo calorie per mole okay so 7 kilo calorie per mole below than that it means it cannot synthesize ATP because for ADP2 ATP synthesis minimum amount of delta G is minus 7.4 kilo calorie and they are asking below than minus 7 so this molecule cannot synthesize ATP okay so let us check glucose 1 phosphate yeah releasing phosphate will able to synthesize ATP so this is correct ADP drive phosphate it is already uh, in phosphate form so this is also true fructose 1 6 by phosphate so all these three molecule can after hydrolysis release phosphate which will provide the energy greater than 7 kilocalorie per mole keratin phosphate it is also correct it can also release more than 7 acetyl phosphate yeah this is not going to release this is below than 700 so okay so answer will be beef moving to next question question number 12 there is some delta g for the melate dehydrogenase catalyzed step reaction of Krebs cycle is 7.1 kilocalorie nevertheless the conversion of melate to oxaloacetate in vivo proceed as spontaneous because the subsequent reaction that consumes the oxaloacetate has delta g of okay so here they are telling that delta g for this melate dehydrogenase is plus 7.1 which is unfavorable because plus Kilo cal 7.1 kilocalorie plus value means you have to put the energy this is, it is unfavorable reaction but the conversion of melate to oxaloacetate which is done by the same enzyme melate dehydrogenase is a spontaneous which is favorable means value will be negative so how this can be possible it means it is a possible only when this reaction is clubbed together with any value which is which should be negative and the value should be greater than 7.4 means if i will provide energy greater than 7.1 and like 7.2 and it should be value will be negative why because it is means it will it is releasing the amount of energy and the amount of energy is required is plus 7.4 so net gain will be minus 0.1 and that's favorable because its energy amount of energy is releasing out so this reaction melate dehydrogenase hydrolysis reaction can be made favorable if this reaction is clubbed with any reaction or biochemical reaction which is actually releasing out energy and that's value should be in negative because it is releasing out and value should be greater than 7.1 so answer will be minus 7 point seven value because this is the only value which is greater than seven point one and that sh that value should be in negative so answer will be c hope it is understood moving to next question question number 13 when freshly isolated intact mitochondria with incubated with adp and the morning okay this experiment shows that both the process of nadh oxidation and ATP production is clubbed is coupled process means both is going to occur together if one will be a stop another will also stop like applying to the cyanide to the uh, complex number 4 which is going to inhibit the oxidation of NADH so ATP production is also not going to happen and if you are going to apply oligomycin which is the inhibitor of 
complex number 5 so ATP synthesis won't take place so NADH oxidation is also not going to take place so both these processes are coupled together from this experiment this is conclusion so now coming to that what they are asking subsequently added addition of cyanide to this system will result which of the following so I have already suggested that if cyanide is going to be added then NADH oxidation is not going to take place and ATP synthesis is not going to take place so here which one option is going to be correct both oxygen consumption and ATP synthesis is inhibited because for NADH oxidation a oxygen is required because it is oxidation process oxygen is required since it is not taking place or NADH oxidation is not taking place so oxygen is also not going to consume so answer will be first